Hey YouTubers and RV fans, this is a special kind of video. Um, as if, for many of you who followed my channel uh, since the beginning, you know that I have been specifically fond of low carbohydrates and specifically live generally a low carbohydrate lifestyle. Um, that translates into a ketogenic diet. Well, I've been following some keto channels uh, over the last few months and interestingly enough, one of those YouTubers that is focused on the ketogenic diet has challenged me to give my reasons for living uh, a low carb ketogenic lifestyle. So in response to that challenge, I'm making this video. So this video is gonna be pretty quick. Um, there's two particular YouTubers that you might wanna check out if you're interested in the Comment. low ketogenic and or Grandma low DC. carbohydrate ketogenic Both are diet. great uh, and YouTubers and um, Grandma DC is really very charming and very funny, uh, has a unique, whimsical sense of humor. And of course, Marion is very special to me. And if you do know why, put it in the comments. If you don't, I'll have to let you know in another video. Any event, um, I've struggled with my weight my entire life. Uh, there's been no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And I've kind of, I've said, it, I've lost and gained myself about a hundred times <laughs> over the years. However, about four years ago, I did find the, um, low carbohydrate plan. I did a lot of research because I wanted to make sure that following a low carbohydrate lifestyle wasn't going to impact my, my health in terms of my cholesterol, in, increasing my uh, risks for heart disease and some other things. So uh, as many of you know, I'm a nurse. So I did a lot of research, looked at a lot of empirical studies, looked at a lot of um, controlled, uh, random controlled clinical trials um, with low fat versus high fat and um, low carb carbohydrate versus um, high carbohydrate diets. And I was shocked and amazed to find um, what kind of information was out there on a low carbohydrate diet. In any event, I put together a plan through a lot of research on the internet. I must have followed 15 different um, sites. Some of them included the uh, Nutrition Authority, the Diet Doctor on YouTube, um, and just a number of, of people that I followed. In any event, I put it together, and in January of 2012, I started the low carbohydrate ketogenic diet. What happened over the next nine months was near short of a miracle. I lost 86 pounds. Now, I will tell you, I was walking between 11 and 14 miles a week, and really enjoyed um, the, um, the lifestyle in terms of what I was able to eat, because I was never hungry. Now I've got to tell you that when you're on a low keto or a low carbohydrate ketogenic diet, you spend the first three or four days um, detoxing off of all the um, carbohydrates. And that includes the glycogen that's stored in your liver, in your muscles, and in a number of different areas. So from that perspective, the, the, the detox was horrifying. Uh, it was a very bad, very bad for me. But once I got past the initial detox and um, I was in ketosis, which is a state of where you're actually burning fat. Um, I began to do some more study and research on insulin and what happens to people who have uh, insulin resistance and uh, hyperinsulinemia and a number of different issues that are impacted by insulin. And it was through this research that I discovered that insulin is really a hormone that plays a tremendous role in whether you store fat or burn fat. Needless to say, at the conclusion of that research, I became even more committed to making sure that I followed a low carbohydrate ketogenic diet. Over the course of that nine month period, the weight literally fell off me. I can tell you straight up that I had never been on a program before where I literally felt the pounds shedding. And that's exactly what they were doing. Now, I'm not certain how many calories I ate every day, I didn't count calories. I ate when I was hungry and that was the end of it. I just stayed away from the carbohydrates. I literally stayed away. Um, many of you will ask how many carbohydrates, how many grams of carbohydrates did I eat in a day? And I would tell you right now, I ate less than 10 grams. And yes, that included no vegetables, that included no fruits. It was predominantly fats and proteins. Um, as I began to stabilized out on the diet, I started adding specific types of vegetables that had a high fiber rate so that my net carbs would never go greater than 20 grams a day. 
and I stayed at a 20 gram um, carbohydrate diet, low carbohydrate diet for a full nine months. Well, actually longer than that, but the weight loss continued for a full nine months. So I reached my, my um, highest loss of 86 pounds within that nine month period and the weight loss just stopped. But what didn't stop is how I felt. Um, first of all, 86 pounds, for those of you who've gained and lost weight, you know 86 pounds is a lot of weight. And it was a, a heck of a lot of weight for me. Um, I had been, I had gotten into clothes that I hadn't been able to get into since I was in high school. So I mean, that was pretty successful. And in, in some ways, the change was almost metamorphosis. <laughs> People didn't even recognize me. They were like, oh my God, you know, he's lost all this weight. The, um, the weight loss did stop, but the health benefits remained consistent, which were wonderful. And I have to tell you, within the first 30 days of my ketogenic diet, I went to the doctor, I had my blood drawn, um, my triglycerides had went, gone from 575 down to 50. Um, my total cholesterol dropped from 240 down to 120. My LDL had dropped to less than 90, and my HDL had come up to over 37. Now, I have been sitting at an HDL of 13. So for those of you who are in the medical field and you know what an HDL of 13 is, that places you at really high risk of um, cardiovascular disease. So I think the benefits speak for themselves. Why am I on a ketogenic diet currently and today? Because I like the way it makes me feel. I don't have brain fog. Um, the eating choices are easy and simple. And at the end of the day, I don't like to feel bloated and miserable. Now, I will readily admit that over the course of the last year, I've put on some weight. And I put on that weight because I haven't been able to walk, uh, because I had a, a pretty bad Achilles heel injury before I left in the RV. Um, that Achilles heel injury is resolved. Um, I'm able to walk now. And so once I get back to the RV, uh, I'm going to be joining a gym and getting myself back into shape. Now, I said I was going to do that when I get up here, and I, and I really did um, focus a lot on the ketogenic diet up here. Um, I've had some moments where I haven't complied, but again, for me, it's not a diet, it is a lifestyle. So for Grandma DC and for Marion, when you talk about this being a lifestyle, right on. I agree. Um, I endeavor to be low carbohydrate every day. Now there is a place where when you stay low carbohydrate for a long time, you become keto adapted. Now I don't profess to know everything about what keto adapted means, but I think it means that you can eat carbohydrates, you know, in huge moderation um, for like one meal maybe, and it's not gonna impact you that much. What I've discovered is that if I have a meal of carbohydrates, you know, once every two or three weeks, that I do see a spike in my glycemic index where my blood sugar goes up, but it comes down very quickly and it doesn't come down to the point where I'm hypoglycemic and shaking and having to eat. Um, I do have specific rules that I use for myself. One of them is no food related activities. Now my friends and family used to laugh at me when I would say no food related activities, but that's because for me, and I speak only for myself, I haven't mastered the ability to make good food choices when I go out to a restaurant. You know, it's real easy for some people to say, oh, I'm just going to order a salad. When I go out to a restaurant, I see all these delicious carbohydrates and I'm like, you know, screw the salad. I want battered and baked chicken. I want pasta, uh, pasta de jour or whatever. I want bread. I want a lot of bread. And, um, you know, so Grandma DC and Marion said, well, what's, what's the hardest part of, of the low carbohydrate diet? Well, for me, the hardest part is staying away from pastas staying away from bread, starches, but the big one is pastries. I could eat donuts and pastries all day long, and that's probably one of the reasons why I got heavy. I stay away from those, though, because they're just evil. Uh, they're delicious, but they're evil. The other thing that I, I try and do, one of my other rules, is no eating after 7 p.m. Um, certainly no eating carbohydrates. Um, I can have protein or I can have fats, and that's fine. I do use coconut oil to cook in quite a bit. And I really love coconut oil. Now, there's some crazy people uh, like Marion and like Grandma DC that put butter and coconut oil in their bulletproof coffee. Uh, I did that in the beginning, and it was fine, but I only did that for a couple of, of weeks, and it really wasn't something I enjoyed so much. So 
I just drink my uh, coffee with half and half. I think you have to be really careful of carb creep, and that's creeping carbs. That means that you're eating something that has a very small amount of carbohydrates in it, and you eat enough of it that over the course of the day, you end up with 26, 30 grams of carbohydrates that have been nothing that you've counted. So any other carbohydrates that you've eaten now are in addition to the carb creep. So I think you really have to be careful about this. The, at the end of the day, the takeaway from this whole thing is that you need to see if ketogenic or low carbohydrate is really something for you. Um, as a full-time RVer, I know that living a low carbohydrate lifestyle is much more convenient in the RV. Um, you know, we don't have a whole lot of storage for food. I don't shop in the middle of the grocery store. I shop on the outer skirts of the grocery store. And that's cool because it makes shopping easier. Um, in addition to that, you save money, I think, with low carbohydrate. Yes, proteins cost more than carbohydrates do, but because you're not eating as much food, uh, it's so much easier, I think, to live in a low carbohydrate life. So that's my take on it. This was the challenge from Grandma DC and from Marion. Thank you guys for your support. Um, thumbs up if you like the video. If you haven't subscribed to the Paddy Wagon, please do so. Uh, lots of stuff are gonna, is going to be going on over the course of the next few weeks. And I really want you to go with me. So thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day. Oh, don't forget, share this video on your Facebook page. Later.